Hi, my name is Kevin and welcome to my channel where we normally are looking at how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it. If you missed last week's video, it was pretty much the first time I'd ever used Webflow and it was a bit of a learning process as I was going through it and just trying it out and seeing what it could do based on different things I'd heard and just trying to experiment and play with it. Uh, and since then, I've had a better chance to get in there, play with things, experiment, all of the things I did, but to get a better idea of how it works and whether I like it or not. And so in this video, I'm going to be talking about Webflow, but also just visual designers in general and what I think about them and where I think things might be going. So front end devs are often, you know, where we write code and then we see these visual editors come up and sometimes we shun them. And I'm 100% guilty of that. I'm not the biggest fan of visual editors, but I've always given them a try. And it's probably because I'm not a front end dev, I'm a designer. <laughs> I come from a design background, I did print design for years, and these visual editors were always cool and then I'd try them and I couldn't get them to do what I wanted to do and it sucked. <laughs> and so I was never a big fan of them and this is going back a really long time. I've been making websites for a long time so I always end up going back to code. Um, you know, I started making websites in the 90s. Holy crap, it's been a while, we're going to 2020. Um, so I've been playing with them for a long time and I've always was frustrated with them. So I always went back to code and the code was, I like code, I still love code. It's still what I'm gonna go back to. Um, but having played with Webflow, I think what they've done is find a really nice balance between the code and the visual editor side of things. Instead of trying to be this drag and drop visual editor like you see in a lot of other places, uh, they rely a lot more on understanding HTML and CSS. It's much more granular than your typical visual editor. And the advantage with that is uh, it produces better code because it's really, you need to sort of understand, or you don't need to, you can, you can learn Webflow without knowing HTML and CSS, but I imagine it would actually be quite a bit of a learning curve. I think if you have an understanding of them at the beginning, it's going to help out a lot. Whereas with a lot of visual editors, you don't necessarily need that. Uh, which is also why, if you saw my last video, you would have seen when I did the code export, I was really impressed with the code that it produced. Because of how granular their controls are, it's pretty much like writing HTML and writing CSS. Uh, just you're doing it in a more visual way. And that has a really big plus is that you can actually export the code and get good quality code from it. Um, I dove in more, I had questions on accessibility. It's pretty good. There's maybe a little bit more you could do if you were doing it on your own, but it's really easy to set up custom labels. I put on area labels on things. Um, I did all sorts of just tests and trials and everything was pretty much, it's a lot like writing HTML and CSS just in a visual way. So on that side, I was really impressed with it. Uh, the animation side, definitely something I'd need to play around with more, but I liked it. Um, and I could definitely see why I'd heard that people would just do an animation and then export that thing. And I could see how that could be a thing because their animation side of thing is, is pretty strong and very easy to use. So that was cool. The reason I think Cody people don't like them is A, a lot of them didn't work in the past. Any visual editor, uh, you're struggling with it a bit or it can't do quite what you want it to. And I do think there are limitations to what Webflow can do. I ran into a couple. Um, I found out you can add pseudo elements, which was really exciting because if you know me, I like pseudo elements and stuff like that. They're really nice for extra design elements but you actually have to do it through custom CSS. So if you want something like that, you have to know the CSS to be able to do it, but it's not difficult to do, it works, it's super cool uh, that you can sort of add that extra layer on. So if you find little things that you can't do, there are easy ways to write your own CSS into the little custom CSS editor, but it's not meant as a, like write all your CSS here for your page. It's really use our editor, but if you find there's things that we can't do there, you can still select your class the way you normally would. And you know, it's so you're putting classes on stuff anyway. Um, so you can definitely target things with your own CSS if you find you're limited by something. Um, I also really liked that you could build these, they're not called components, I keep thinking of component symbols, where uh, say you had the same thing, a call to action that's the same on every page, you could build it as a symbol and then reuse it from one page to the next and if you change it in one spot, it's changing on all the pages. That's really cool, that's really neat. Uh, and definitely super valuable. It's sort of like a template that gets brought across your other pages so you don't have to rebuild it all the time or even copy and paste all the different pieces. You just drag that one thing in there. It's all there, but they're linked. So if you wanna change it once, you're changing it across the board. 
love that. But I also found it was useful if you were doing a testimonial and you had three different people set up, you could take it, make a symbol, copy it over, and then on link the symbol, switch the images, switch the text on it. But at least then you're not having to recreate the same thing over and over again. You have it, just replace the image, replace the text, everything's all set up, it's all good to go. And if you set it all up with classes from the beginning, if you need to make a change to it, you just go into your CSS on that class and you've modified it, change the font, change the drop shadow you put on an image. They're all linked together anyway. Uh, so it becomes sort of these components and I thought that was really, really cool. Um, so yeah, I, I honestly am impressed with Webflow. I don't think it's going to become a part of my normal workflow. I'm not gonna be going back to it all the time because I enjoy writing my own CSS so much. I find doing that a lot of fun, but I do see the benefits. I could throw something together really quickly with it. Uh, pro tip, <laughs> or something I discovered is, uh, I was getting a little bit frustrated when I was playing with it the first time, scrolling up and down on their, their menu on the, the right side to try and find what I was looking for. I started collapsing all those menus. I just had them all closed all the time and I just open up the one I needed so I need a typography, pop that open, change what I need there, and then close it again. And then, oh, this element, I need to change the, the size of it or whatever it is. I'd only open the little tab I needed so much easier. I found it just a treat to work with like that because I wasn't scrolling up and down and searching. I knew where I could find different things. So that I really, that made a big difference in how I was working. And it made me appreciate the platform a lot more. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'd go back to it on a full-time thing, but... I look at it in a way, I know a lot of people who watch my channel make WordPress sites, and I see this as a really cool alternative to that type of thing, where you're already, instead of using a theme, and there are themes for Webflow as well, uh, but you can get your theme or you can build a custom site, and there's a CMS built into Webflow. So you could have a blog or have something like that. There's e-commerce as well. So, you know, it's, it's great to sort of poo-poo on these visual editors, but if it's coming with a lot of the you know if you're using wordpress because you need the cms side of things you want easy blog posts well this is a way you could pretty much have your own custom template set it all up with only knowing html and css and not having to get into another you know start learning php uh, to figure out how to make a child theme or to get into even static site generators which i love my site's built with a static site generator i'm going to keep that that way i'm probably going to learn other static site generators in the not too distant future but it's, you know, if you don't want to take that dive in there yet and you're not at that stage yet, I think this is a really cool tool. And that, you know, it's the idea that companies have been trying to make a visual editor forever now and they've been struggling. And this is one of the first ones where I think you it can do a lot. It's not unlocking everything. There's still limitations uh, when it would come to like an enterprise level website, eh, not sure. Uh, but for a day to day small business website, anything like that, or personal website, things like that, I think it works really well. And I think that any sort of visual editor, if it does work well, we shouldn't poo on it just because it's a visual editor and not code. Um, I think that if you're looking at something and saying it's not code, so it's not as good as what I'm doing, you need to reevaluate a little bit and wonder why you don't like it. Is it because it's too easy? Is it really bad if something gets easier? <laughs> um, one of the problems I honestly think with front end development is how complicated it's getting uh, with the melding of front end and back end and just all the different workflows and all the you know, pre processors, post processors. It's, it was so easy. We had HTML, we had CSS, maybe a little bit of JavaScript. That was it. Nowadays, like, holy cow. <laughs> We're not there anymore and it's gotten so complicated. And it's so funny because most of everything else is getting simplified. Uh, you're looking at photography, digital photography opened up photography to a lot more people. You didn't have to buy film, get your film processed, know how to handle negatives, all of that. Like the, the financial side of things, just you 10,000 pictures on it, you know, you're opening up photography to more people instead of less people. Now we all have photo, you know, does that mean photography is less valuable than it used to be? Or I look at Photoshop, I teach Photoshop in the classroom. And in the old days, to make a selection of something complicated was hard. It took time. There's all these cool techniques that I still know how to do. I don't use them anymore because Photoshop's gotten so good at making complex selections easy. Is that a bad thing that Photoshop's easier to use? Or is it a good thing because more people can use it quicker and Photoshop's a creative tool. It's all about being creative. So if we're enabling creativity, that's a good thing. 
And I think that tools like Webflow and other things like that that are trying so hard and starting to succeed, it's opening up the door to more people to make websites. And if you're looking at it going, holy crap, I'm going to lose my job, I understand how that can seem scary. But I also don't think that that means all the jobs are going to disappear all of a sudden. Because it's not taking, you know, these are people that probably wouldn't be able to afford to hire you anyway. You're opening up websites to new groups of people, or even if they're paying someone to make a Webflow site for them, maybe it's cheaper than another option, but they wouldn't have paid for that other option before. You look at the divide in website cost, and I understand that people get frustrated with the low end getting cheaper and cheaper, uh, which definitely is a problem at times, but it's also, you have to think about it, how many websites exist these days? How many companies now have websites that never had websites before? When websites first came around and they were expensive, it was only for either someone who could make their own website or it was for these big companies that could afford a ten or $100,000 website. Nowadays, you, you didn't have a website unless you could build it yourself for cheap. Now it's just opened up to everybody. So it's not that these tools are taking things away from people. They're enabling more people to be able to get into the game. And I think that's wonderful. Uh, the more, you know, it, there shouldn't be this... Is, I keep thinking of walled garden. I don't think that's the right word, but I love code. I think code's amazing. I think you can, it makes you think in different ways. And I think more people should learn to code. But I also think that not accepting something, like we, we shouldn't be walling ourselves in because to be good at making a website, you have to learn how to code. And that's this rule that's in place. Like if we can enable it for more people without that barrier of entry, the, all the better. And one thing I loved about Webflow is because it's so granular, like I really think if you came in with no knowledge and you learned Webflow, then you're learning about Flex, they have Grid. You have to know all these little pieces of all of it to be able to actually make it work and to make a nice website that you'd actually then maybe discover that and then that's your barrier, that, that, that's your barrier of entry, barrier of entry, that doesn't make sense. That's your gateway into actually learning HTML and CSS and JavaScript and all these other things. You know, it's, I, I look at the coding games they have for kids now. I, my, my, you know, my, my five-year-old likes this game, but it's just choosing directions to make a character jump and move around in. Those are the first steps to learning code. It's visual. You're dragging little pieces. You're putting them. What direction do I go in? I, I don't want to simplify <laughs> what some of these things are doing, but uh, I think if you're looking at a visual editors in a negative way because of their limitations and you can't achieve what you want to achieve, maybe take a second look at them because maybe they're better now than they used to be. Uh, and I guarantee you actually they are based on what I've just discovered. But I also think that wonder, like, is it, look at the reason why you don't like it. Because if it's just because you think that you need to know how to do the code side of things, and you shouldn't be able to do it. If not, you're looking at it the wrong way. So I really think that tools like this are part of the future, but I don't think they are the future. I think it's part of the future. I think it's something we need to get used to. We need to understand that it's there. And I think we need to use it for what it's there for and not see it as it's trying to take over corporate websites. Maybe it can, maybe you could do it. You know, the enterprise level website, I don't think it's what it's really made for. Um, Maybe I'm completely off base with that, but if we use our tools for what they're there for, I think you'll be, you'll all be happier and realize that, hey, maybe this is a cool tool that I'm not gonna use, but my friend could really use that. Or this client who wanted a WordPress website, maybe they'd actually be better with that because then they could tinker with it a little bit much easier. They still have all the functionality they wanted to have. Huh, that, that could be a cool possibility too instead of just buying a template and setting them up with that. So yeah, I think if you haven't given it a shot, uh, maybe it's not for you, maybe you don't want to. If you watched all of this though and you're still listening, at least give it a try and see what you think about it. Um, or at least keep your mind open the next time you see either Webflow or any other sort of new kid arrive on the block instead of just dismissing it right away. I guess, and I guess that's it. I don't really know how to end this, so thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons for helping support me and everything I do here on this channel. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.